Hi everyone, welcome to this month's Nanum of the Month. Uh, we're going to be exploring the semaglutide molecule made by Novo Nordisk. And what's really important here is that uh, this is actually used to help treat people with diabetes. And traditionally they would need to actually inject themselves uh, with this, but uh, due to some you know, really novel innovations, uh, Novo Nordisk actually invented a way to take this orally. And so you can just take a pill and uh, this will interact uh, with you know, various proteins in your body and it'll you know, help reduce your blood sugar. Today we're going to be looking at a paper that's a few years old now from Novo Nordisk that actually provides uh, information on the crystal structure that they found between semaglutide and what, what we see here in pink is the peptide part of semaglutide bound to its uh, natural receptor in the body, the GLP-1 receptor. One thing that uh, I wanted to mention about semaglutide is Novo Nordisk took the peptide and attached a fatty acid to it, which we're not showing here in the, in the rendering of the crystal structure, and that fatty acid in the body allows it to bind to albumin, a protein in plasma, and that, that association allows the drug to stay in the body much longer than it usually would. Usually the GLP-1 peptide would be chopped up easily. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that too. Here, here on our screen, on our PDF here, is a picture of semaglutide, and you can see this part at the bottom is the large fatty acid. Yep, that part, that's what allows it to bind to albumin and uh, stay in the bloodstream longer. So let's play around with the surface colorings here, all right? So uh, we could, of course, uh, decrease the opacity where we just have, you know, really our, our two structures and we could, you know, see that they get relatively close to semaglutide with the pink ribbon structure and the pink carbonite coloring. Um, but let's go ahead and increase the opacity of our surface. And, and so this slider allows us to have a, you know, very, very transparent surface all the way up through a, a completely opaque surface. And with the completely opaque surface, uh, at least in VR, it's very easy to tell that there's a, just a very small gap between the two proteins. And Steve, um, what I like about this view too is we have it colored such that uh, hydrophobic regions are in yellow, uh, uh, regions that tend to be positively charged are blue, and ones that have more negative charge are red. And so you can really see these hydrophobic interactions where we've got yellow on yellow. Yeah, I'm going to lower the opacity just slightly, maybe around 85% or so. Great. And yeah, we could still see that there's that yellow on yellow interaction and we even see through to the atoms that are, that are right next to each other. So let's go ahead and split these two. Um, we're just going to unlock them from each other. And now we could decouple them and uh, really just select one at a time. And so, you know, this is um, you know, going to be in the bloodstream and then it's going to come over and, you know, find this protein and really bind right to it with that yellow hydrophobic right on that yellow hydrophobic. So I'll just select both of our structures, click a line, there we go. An interesting thing about semaglutide and, and GLP-1 peptides in general is they really have a, a well-formed conformation that really is just perfect for allowing it to stay in this conformation and fit well. And so we can look at some of the, the intramolecular interactions, hydrogen bonds of the peptide itself that are really important for establishing this conformation. Yeah, um, so we'll select our two molecules, um, go to the modify menu. Um, from here, we could use the compute tool to calculate the hydrogen bonds. So for instance, if you, if you find glycine 35 here. Yep, that is right here in the uh, highlighted. Okay, the, the nitrogen of the, of the backbone should be interacting with leucine 32. I uh, believe the that's event. right here. Yeah, um, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, hide the surface in this one area. There we go. All right, just so we could kind of like you know, peek into this window. Yeah, so you can see that um, the nanome program pulled out this important interaction between this backbone nitrogen and this backbone carbonyl of these two amino acids. So another hydrogen bond interaction that's important is between arginine 36, so it's back, backbone nitrogen, and cool. it should be interacting with tryptophan 31's backbone carbonyl. Yep, right there. Right there. Um, right that's there. another important interaction for holding this uh, important part of the ligand in place. 
Cool, yeah, so we see our RG36. Uh, it's going to be right here, our tryptophan 31. Um, and then we have that you know, really nice hydrogen bond that's just forming between that nitrogen over here and this oxygen over here. Yeah, one other thi important thing to note is that Nova Nordisk changed two of the amino acids from GLP-1 to this peptide, to semaglutide, uh, mainly to, to improve pharmacokinetics, to make it more stable. And uh, one of those isn't shown here because it's, it's cut off. This is a truncated version of semaglutide. But we can look at position 34, where here we see an arginine. Yep, so that's and, right there. And in GLP-1, this is a lysine. So this is an important change they've made that uh, improved potency and improved properties. Cool, so we just changed around the coloring here so we could see uh, the carbons are in gray, the nitrogen's in blue, the oxygen's in red. And so, um, yeah, so we had the original arginine over here. It had a you know, slightly different uh, rotomer conformation where it had a little bit more interactions there. Um, but these things are kind of you know, moving around all the time anyways. Uh, but now we could see if we mutate it into lysine, uh, it's not going to pick up as many interactions. Right? That's right. That appears to be so, yes. So it's really great to come in here and see semaglutide. I think back to the first GLP-1 peptide that became a drug, exenatide. This actually came from the saliva of the Gila monster, uh, really discovered by a former colleague of mine, Andrew Young, a brilliant scientist. Uh, that drug is on the market, but it's really excited to see how far things have come with semaglutide and Novo Nordisk actually turning this into an oral medication for people who suffer with diabetes. Really exciting. Awesome. So, you know, if you want to understand this pill that makes semaglutide orally available, um, go ahead and check out this Nanum workspace and see it for yourself. So, thanks everyone. Thanks everybody.